Where does hope lie beneath the debris of broken homes? Maybe in tiny air pockets for some, but looking at this, even the most hopeful would have to accept how remote that chance is. A couple of days ago, this is where lives were lived. Now, it's where they were lost. Officially, this is an operation to rescue the living. In reality, it is to recover the dead. The silence tells its own story. They have the most sophisticated equipment, but there is little indication of life beneath. Unfortunately, this has been a tragic night. Our unaccounted for number has gone up to 159. In addition, we can tragically report the death count is now four. It was two in the morning when the building collapsed. At that point, most people would have been sleeping unaware of what was happening. In the hours after, some were pulled out alive. A glimmer of hope in the midst of such tragedy. But the sense of desperation builds by the hour here at the family centre. DNA tests being done in grim expectation of what lies ahead. The way my uncle's apartment is, I see his furniture. I see his porch furniture there. Mike Silber is missing his uncle, two cousins and a number of friends. It's an absolute catastrophe and, um, and, and there are thousands of lives affected by this. This is a war zone. This is not a building collapse. The, if, you're, if you go close enough and you see what I'm able to see and if I share my videos with you, this looks like a bomb dropped on top of the building. The friends of Bhavna Patel, who moved here from the UK, are waiting on news of her and her unborn child, as well as her one-year-old daughter. It is unrelentingly difficult work and the weather conditions are making it even more challenging. Beneath the ground, they're working through a car park to gain access. Above, they're working through the rubble in any way they can. Surrounded all the time by the reminders of the lives of those for whom they search.